Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is my review for Real Housewives of Atlanta. This is season 10. This is part one of the reunion. And let me be honest and say that um, I didn't think the reunion part one was popping. Like, it was real basic. Um, but you know, let's just go ahead and get into it. Lipstick of tonight is Urban Decay. The color is heroin. You know, y'all know I like my dark, dark colors. Yes, I'm wearing my I in fact shirt. I'm gonna wear it in basically all the goddamn on videos when I don't feel like putting on no real clothes. And it's gonna be, you know, like my other famous favorite shirt. Um, yes, so the mugs are still available, the shirts are all available, and the link to get them both is in the description below. And so if you scroll down right under the video, there's a description box, hit the little down arrow, it's right there. So you go ahead and get your shirts, get your mugs, you know, some sips and tea with Jaylee, let's, let's gonna let it be what's gonna be. Um, yeah, episode, well, part one of the reunion was not all that it cracked up to be in my opinion you know we do see the ladies kind of getting dressed a little bit we see you know Sheree on the phone with Tyrone because what else she got to do besides call Tyrone Tyrone call her um Tyrone must just have a cell phone in prison because how is it that he always has a chance to call her when she's filming I know people in prison okay and my thing is you kind of don't just have free reign of the phone whenever you want to call somebody like it's the craziest things, and sometimes you just can't get to the phone. So, how is it that he's all... I mean, he was able to call her on the day of the reunion at the certain... Boy, bye. They smoked that man a cell phone, and they need to check his cell. Check under the mattresses. Check in the pillowcases. Check between his ass cheeks. I don't know. Check something, because that man can't be using goddamn on pay phones. But, it is what it is. You know, why is Portia wearing the crown? I mean, I know we are princes and queens and stuff or whatever, but why is she wearing a crown? And it's a it's a manly crown. It's not even like a prince. Girl, look, let's move on with that part. I ain't going to even deal with that. Um, We do see that Kenya announced that she's pregnant. Okay. But she would not say how far along she was because, of course, she must be very, very, very early, early along in the pregnancy. Kenya was just live on Watch What Happens Live earlier this week and her mama wasn't showing a bit okay mama was still slim and trim or whatever she gotta be freshly pregnant like she i mean like the sperm and the egg just met like you know what i'm saying i don't even think the eggs and the y chromosomes have mixed together okay it gotta be real early for her to not want to even say oh i'm four weeks or oh i'm eight weeks I mean, my thing is when she said you know well i don't want to elaborate until i'm further along until i'm past the save point everyone knows the save point is basically 12 weeks 12 weeks um at least 12 weeks some people wait till they're 16 weeks which is four months um so she's not even was well, she at the time of the reunion she wasn't even three months along but i'm like then why you say something like if you ain't gonna say well yes if you yes i'm pregnant um we're going to you know be expecting either boy or girl you know later on this year you know i'm like congratulations but i mean I wish she would have just said, you know, how far along she was. But, you know what I'm saying? Thank God that she's able to have, she got her husband and her baby. So, you know what I'm saying? All peace be to God. Now, all the ladies, I didn't like Sheree's outfit, but all the ladies were dressed beautifully. Okay, I think Candy was the best dress. I love Candy's hair. I think Candy was sitting pretty the whole night. Um... Cynthia's dress was real extraly beautiful. You know, it was real extra, but it was very beautiful. Um, I love the color of Kenya's dress. I think I love that bright, bright um, yellow color. Portia's dress was cute when she had a whole little cape. You know what I'm saying? I guess she was an old school queen. Um, I can't remember. What did Nene wear? I mean, I, it was a red dress that I, I think it was cute. I did not like Sheree's dress because it looked like it was just too much fabric draped in the wrong way and y'all know i ain't too much fan of, of sheree but it, i mean it wasn't ugly i just it just wasn't my she was my least favorite of all of them dressed nicely so you know it is what it is you know we saw them do the evolution looks of each housewife um nini 
as we all know, looks the most different. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, she's had some work done, okay? But the thing about it, I would Andy, because I watched um, when she was on Watch What Happens Live tonight, and Andy did say he's happy she's never had any work done to make her face not move. Nene has had work done to her face, but he's right. Her face still moves and makes all kind of faces, like her face isn't stiff like Kim's face. Um, get cast up in shade. Uh, but she looks the most different. She has had the best upgrade, so to speak. Um, and as people say, when people get money, they just, they can, they can look better. Um. I still think she looks like herself. She just looks like a better version of herself or whatever. So, you know, that was cool. Candy's hair changed. That's about it. Um, Cynthia's hair changed. That was about it. Kenya, you can see how her skin did get better. Um, she was able to get better hair and stuff or whatever for the camera. Sheree went from, you know... Let me just move on. I don't even care. Uh, Portia cl clearly had work done, as we know as well. You know, but it was what it was. And then, you know, the funny part was when Andy asked Sheree, <laughs> well, whatever happened to she by Sheree? Like, you know, whatever happened to that? Sheree's response was joggers. I said, bitch, what did you jog? Like, I thought she had a stroke. Like, why did she just say random words? And they was looking like joggers. And then Candy was like, well, no, he's saying, like, whatever happened to your yo clothing line she's like i'm gonna make joggers and she kind of gave candy some 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 light shade like you, 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 you're doing too much look sheree girl you ain't making no jog if you ain't if you couldn't make she by sheree happen you had them little who gonna take me blue t-shirts now you're gonna have joggers and then it's gonna be around the house like it was she was just confused okay she was confused sheree ain't bit more coming out with no joggers than a man on the moon and then when they said well, okay well, when are gonna come out um um, September or, you know, September or spring or summer. First of all, them all different months and all different seasons. Which one is it, Sheree? Because if it's going to be the spring, I mean, like it's spring now. If it's going to be the summer, summer's like May, June, July. Uh, September, that's the fall. So what she meant to say was, I don't know. I'm making shit up as I go. So when I leave this reunion, I'm going to have to go check to see where I can get some joggers from. I'm going to go to the little, you know what I'm saying, the swap meet, get me some little joggers for the cheap, cheap. You know what I'm saying? Put my little, uh, SBS you know she by Sheree on the little side lines or whatever and then sell it off the trunk of my car so <laughs> that was just not nice um but yeah girl ain't nobody about no, no I didn't know Sheree is the kind of person to where when she says she gonna make something happen she gonna have some new endeavor you just give it eight years and then it will become to fruition I think she gonna man look you gotta be dealing with Tyrone ass who gonna be in prison all these years you gotta sell that guy that expensive ass house you don't have time to have no jogging sweatsuit uh clothing line I mean even though we know that you no longer gonna be a housewife for at least the next season I mean you got some extra time on your hands but you not gonna have nowhere to you know what I'm saying show off them joggers is she gonna get Kim some joggers? Is Kim gonna wear your joggers on her TV show? Cause we know that you won't be on her TV show. But you know, let's just not go there. Um, Kim, I mean not Kim. Uh, when Andy said to uh Nene how Kim used to always wear wigs and how Kim was saying that now Nene wears wigs a lot. Um, honey, when Nene said that Kim's wigs from back in the day was from Party City, bitch, I said they did like some Party City wigs. Kim was shopping at Party City from damn blonde wigs back. Girl, I said that is the absolute truth. And my thing is, Nene has always worn some kind of fake hair. Every woman on all these shows wear some kind of fake hair. I mean, I don't wear fake hair. But you know what I'm saying? They all wear some kind of fake hair. So, girl, Kim, shut the hell up. Um... Candy and Portia. Um, look, I'm not going to spend too much time on it. You know, Portia, for the most part, um, does not fully accept what she did. A lot of people be coming to my comments, oh my God, Portia should not have to apologize again. Nah, nah, nah. It ain't even about Portia having to apologize again. It's the fact of the matter that you can tell Portia don't really mean her apology. Portia saying sorry just to be able to move on from it, but Portia don't really feel sorry. Low key, Portia don't really feel like she did anything wrong. And that's the and that's why Candy don't fuck with her. Because it does not feel like she thinks she did something wrong and the apology really is isn't genuine it's a difference and Nene said it best she's like you know sometimes a person has to feel that you are really sorry for what you did and you want to make things better and Portia has not done that Portia apologizes because they're on the show and what Candy said people 
did not realize was she said at the time when the reunion happened um and then when the season started shooting again it only had been a couple of weeks we see the next season a whole year later but they were filming a couple of weeks later you hoes in the real life be beefed out with your goddamn cousin for six seven eight years you want candy to forgive Portia of a line on her on national tv within a couple of weeks that ain't how it rolls so people will say oh she need to she need to move on it's been a, it's been a year it hadn't been a year but it had been a couple of weeks so she, she was still the fuck pissed off and she had every right to be um, and the fact that when Candy was talking to Portia and was saying, you know, you don't even understand, you don't even really accept what you did could have really broken down my whole, my whole business, my whole brand. And the simple fact that as when Candy was talking to her, just as a person who she had hurt, when Portia was looking away, rolling her eyes, looking all up, you could look at everywhere, but at Candy, she could not even look at the person she wronged. That is what I mean. That is what Candy mean. That's what other people mean when they say... Portia really ain't sorry. She's not. She isn't at all. It's the equivalent of if your man keep cheat, cheat on you, baby, I'm sorry. But he gonna cheat again. You didn't really mean you're sorry. You said it just because you wanted to say it to feel like, oh, well, I apologize. But you you still did some fucked up shit and you don't really feel bad because you kind of keep doing the shit. So the same way that Portia just keeps negating the fact that what she did was fucked up. Portia has never said what she did as far as Hearing something that could that could uh, tarnish someone's reputation and saying it on national television. And what Candy said was, we all know how this works. We all know that if you say something when recording, you want it to be out into the world because you're, you're, you're recording. She said, we also know things about each other that we don't say on camera because we know if we say it on camera, it's going to get out. So Portia knew exactly what she was doing when she went on camera and said what she said. That's what Candy wants her to apologize for. It's the fact that you deliberately took information that you knew would be damaging and you said it on national television. You didn't come to me personally. You didn't do it when we wasn't filming. You did it when we were filming for a reason. That's the thing that she wants Portia to apologize for. And that's what Portia has never done. Um, whew, That was a lot to say. I'm so thirsty right now. Um, But Portia then said, well, I've already said sorry. You know, I don't know how many other times I can say sorry. Um, And then it's how Candy always plays the victim. Candy does not play victim, but things happen to Candy. And when they do, she take up for herself. And my thing is, Candy should not have to get over it. Again, you can't do something to somebody and then expect them to to heal in the way you want them to heal or to be over in the time that you want them to be over because you tired of living in your goddamn own sins. When you do something, you have to, when you make a bed, you have to lie in it. You might have to lie in it for a week. It could be a year. It could be for the rest of your life. The same way Candy has to live with for the rest of her life some people really think she was out here trying to drug a bitch and you know it is it is what it is and Portia just kind of pissed me off because you know what I'm saying I'm like you accused that lady of wanting to rape you and I mean Portia just Portia made me want to like go to her house take all her clothes like cut them up pour some bleach on her clothes like she wanted me to just like get some kind of revenge like girlfriend revenge like I wanted to ruin all your clothes like you know what I'm saying cut up all your wigs uh, you know, something that's not, you know, physical damage or whatever to her. I want to just fuck up some shit because Portia, is, she's, it, it made me so mad. Because she doesn't own what she did. She doesn't. And can't nana, can't nana motherfucker come out here tell me different. So go ahead with your bullshit. Um, Nene also said, you know, she felt like Portia didn't, you know, do anything to make people feel like that she was trying to make amends for what she did. And she didn't tell, you know, was. Oh, here come Marlo. Marlo was dressed beautifully. Okay, we know that Mama can dress. However, Marlo was extra on all. Ex Marlo is extra on all extra levels, plus extra stairs, plus extra sauce, plus extra whatever. Okay, she's an extra chicken nugget and a goddamn twenty piece. Um, she just extra as fuck for no damn reason. And you know, Marlo came on, you know, and she instantly went at Kenya. I think Andy asked her a question first, but you know what I'm saying? He opened the door and Marlo walked right the fuck through it. You know, she brings up how um, she felt like that hurt because they would say, you know, in the beginning, Marlo was Nene's friend. Then Marlo, when she fell out with Nene, she was uh, Kenya's friend. Then when her and Kenya fell out, she became Sheree's friend. And then now her and Nene are back being cool. 
So Marlo says that she felt like Kenya was only her friend to, you know, kind of sad swipe or sad eye or make Nene feel some kind of way. Because at the time, Nene and Marlo was not friends. My thing is, Marlo, you sound like a hypocrite because the same way that you feel like Kenya used you to get back at Nene, so does you. You and Kenya both were not feeling Nene, let's be honest. Um, but you can't like blame Kenya that Kenya was the only one going doing that. You didn't know you no longer had an end with Nene on the show. And at that point at that point in time on that season, Kenya was beefing with Nene to whatever extent. I'm so sorry, y'all. And when you saw that, you and Kenya both kind of just the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And that is what y'all did. Y'all kind of just teamed up a little bit to be friendly. And y'all did it to piss Nene off. The same way when y'all went to that goddamn baseball game and you went with Kenya, knowing Nene would be there, and y'all both did things to get on Nene nerves. You can't come and be like, oh, not that me and Nene's cool now. Oh, it was Kenya who wanted to be my friend to get back at Nene. No, you did too. So just own what you did and say, we we was friends then, we ain't friends now. You know, Kenya brought up the real reason they were not friends, friends was because once they kind of was on the outs, and uh, Marlo was kind of more Nene's friend or more of Sheree's friend or whatever. How, um, I'm like, what? Uh, but yeah, Kenyon brings up how it was the fact that when they went on that camping trip, how Marlo jokingly, rudely, just out the blue said, well, yeah, no wonder your mama didn't want you. And, you know, she said that was a low blow, which it completely is. Marlo don't know that lady was not, she didn't know Kenya at the time of whatever situation with her mother. So to say to someone, I can see why your mama didn't like you, when you know that person is struggling with that relationship, was some bullshit, to, you know, period. And Kenya said, that was it for me. You know, at that point in time, you know what I'm saying, she went too far and, you know, that crossed the line, so I left it at that. At that point, they going back and forth. You know what I'm saying? Mama talking about uh, Kenya's skin. Her skin is better now. Um, Kenya, what did Kenya call her? Kenya called her somebody in a wig. And it was very funny. But they were going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I feel like this is why Marlo does not have a peach. Marlo can't, Marlo does not know how to balance being a petty, messy bitch, but also bring in your own storyline or your own something to the show. She doesn't have her own something. Um, and that's why she does not have a peach. She never has her own something. Not only that, I think it's because she's messy, she's petty, and she's not transparent. No one knows who Marlo is, what Marlo does, and how she does it. Um, at all. And that's the reason why people can't really get behind her. Yes, she can dress. Yes, she has petty comments. She really, really does. But other than that, she gives nothing to the show. And no one wants to follow a single woman who we don't know how she make no money or what she do, what she came from. And she's just kind of not interesting unless she's in a group setting with the other like She can't hold a scene on her own. Like if Candy at home and maybe we're talking to Todd, we'll watch that part. If Nene at home, just talking to Greg, we'll watch that part. Hell, we watched Kenya be at home on her cell phone talking to somebody. We've watched Cynthia. We, we've watched the other ladies have solo scenes and they're interesting. I can't see myself being interested by a scene with just Marlo because I'm like, where does she live? What does she do? Like, is she a prostitute? Is she a lawyer? Is she an activist? Is she a, a, a hair salesman? Does she sell bundles? Does she do lashes? Like, what the fuck does she do? And she never talks about what she does. And typically, if we get a friend of the show, we get some kind of information about them and we can kind of click with it. You can't click with Marla because when Marla's on the scene, she's just being extra, 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 read all about it at all times. And you like, wait, what the fuck is she here for again? Oh, just to kind of you know, talk shit about Kenya. Okay, you got Sheree for that. We don't need y'all both. And at least with Sheree, we can just rag on her about her goddamn Tyrone issues. So that's why Marlo don't have a peach. And I don't think they're going to give Marlo a peach next season. I think Marlo will continue to be just a friend of the show. Um, Kenya then brings up how Marlo tried to blackmail or pimp out Nene's ex, that dude, John. When Nene and Greg went through that little small divorce or whatever, and Nene was dating that man... John, that old, that white man who was like a piece of, a piece of owner, a piece of restaurant owner, you know, I didn't know this. I honestly didn't. And Kenya says, and Nene kind of said it was true, and so did Marlo, that after Nene was dating him, that Marlo then messed with him, and Marlo took pictures of 
text conversations in John's phone between Nene and him and blackmailed that man for 20 grand to not release them. I said, bitch, what? All Nene said was, I do think it was fucked up. I would never date someone, you know, that my friend has dated. But I was already back with Greg. Me and Greg had already got remarried. I did not care. Um, it was what it was. Marlo then said, you know, $20, that's nothing. That's my Nemo Marcus bill. So you're going to admit that you got this man for twenty grand, and that you did some foul shit. Marlo then her, herself says, what I did was wrong. We moved past it. Well, bitch, have you? I can't befriend a bitch who did anything to me, Shady. I just can't. I mean, I would keep, have to keep her at arms, foot, earlobe, nose, length the fuck away. Like, we couldn't be cool at all. And I did see how Marlo, not Marlo, how Nene had put on social media, how her and Marlo are cool now. And she won't allow anyone to um, bring a wedge in between them. And my thing is, speaking the truth to me doesn't mean it's a wedge. I mean, obviously, there was some kind of problem between Nene and Marlo. And the fact that Kenya brought it up, because we hadn't heard what happened ever. We did not know. So I'm like, come on, Kenya, with the tea. And her thing was just, Marlo keeps saying how she makes money her own way. No, bitch, you out here blackmailing people. Like, she told Marlo that she has a, a a swipe scam between her legs. I'm looking like, she, they taking rides. They got char girl, charge it. Um, Marlo said how she was never, that she never slept with him, but you still got money from that. Um, they do ask Marlo, like, what do you do? And she said, I dated, um, was it on this episode? It might be on next episode that I I think it's somewhere. I don't know where it was, but I'm going to say what I said. That she dated a billionaire. And I think it was the next, you know, it's the next episode. How she dated a billionaire or whatever. And I guess he got money from there. How she's invested wisely. She said how her business is, uh, is Marlo LLC. Girl, bye. And, but you, look, but what do you do? If someone said, Jelly, what do you do? I work in billing and I do YouTube. Oh, it's on YouTube. I talk about different TV shows. I give different gossip. I'm a blogger. That's what I do. Marlo, what do you do? I, it's Marlo LLC. Bitch, that don't say what you do. What, what do you do? Girl, bye. So, who cares? Um, Kenya and her husband. Look, I'm so tired of people fucking with Kenya and her husband. You know, Kenya said that her husband proposed to her. Because Andy said, you know, you're, on a, you're on a reality show. And two weeks before filming started, you went and got engaged and got married and didn't tell anybody. Honey, Kenya said, look, when he proposed to me, I was happy. I wasn't concerned with letting y'all know. And when he said he wanted to elope, I went with it. I think there's a thin line between a th a them thinking you're on a reality show, so you should let us know everything. I am pretty, sh I'm 100% sure there are things that go on in all these light ladies' lives that they don't let the TV show, they don't let the cameras know at all. Um, Kenya chose to keep this man off camera what i like is what she's because they also asked her um she said you know he wanted to he proposed i didn't you know i didn't want i didn't care about it i'd be on film he wanted to elope i didn't care about it being on film um and when he we eloped like my dad wasn't there his parents weren't there um they asked her has she met his parents strangely she said no she hasn't met them in person she said that she's only talked to them over the phone is that strange Yes, but if you think about it, Kenya and Marlo, Kenya and Marlo, Kenya and um, her husband Mark are not kids. Kenya is well into her 40s. Um, Mark is, I'm pretty sure, o older as well. And I'm pretty sure their parents are older too. So it might not take a let me let you meet these people in person. We don't know how close he is to his family. Um, is it weird? For me, in my opinion, because of, of my relationship with my parents, absolutely. Um, however, sometimes when you're older, it's different. You know what I'm saying? And like she said, that his parents don't live in Atlanta. They don't. They live in a whole different state. And we just have not went to see them. That doesn't mean that she hasn't had phone conversations. It does not mean they maybe have not Skyped or FaceTimes. Technology is everything um, these days. And some people just don't want or need to have people all up in their mix, even their parents. As I said, Kenya is damn near 50, if she's not 50 already. And Mark is older too. So we can't look at things from our perspective of how we would do things. Um, you know, even they brought up how Kenya was always 
very vocal on the show about wanting to be married, about wanting to have a kid. So why would she then be so secretive or just not show it when it happens? And she said the best example ever. Look at what that got me. I was so open about my struggles. I was ridiculed for it. If I didn't have a man, I was barren and, and lonely. You know, I tried it that way. It didn't work for me. And when I tried it a different way, she's married and she has a child. Think about Beyonce and Jay-Z. For how many years did we not hear a peep from them? We No one saw Jay-Z and Beyonce's wedding. They didn't announce that shit to anybody. They lived their life completely private. And then, slowly but surely, they came out their shell and started being more public with things. Every person is... Um, Zoe Saldana is very private about her children. We have not seen her children's faces at all. Um, Carrie Washington, we have her and her marriage and her husband. They keep things very, very private. Um, George Clooney has fucking twins who we've never seen. They might not even really fucking exist. Different couples do things different ways. And Kenya has every white right to feel like I tried it the public way and that shit didn't work. I just got torn to shreds. Maybe if I do something different, it can be that way. Um, they bring up how was it because her husband didn't want her to be on the show. How he thought the show was very, you know, bad representation of women. I mean, let's be honest. At times, it is is and everyone who isn't a reality star don't want to be on tv and i felt like they kept nitpicking at every little thing to downgrade her marriage instead of saying you know what it's a man she says she married now she's pregnant we've seen wedding photos let it be what's gonna be and stop beating it over the goddamn bat let it be whatever's gonna be if she lying let it come out later but to keep ragging on her is like you said it's the reason he did not want to be on the show because look what y'all doing we he he was on the show and y'all still made it an issue y'all still nitpicked at every little thing because he didn't close his hands on my hands because he had a nose ring because he looked he, he felt or looked awkward he ain't a fucking reality tv star he ain't that he's a businessman Okay, and so, and I don't, you know, I'm, as y'all know, I'm not like 100% a Kenya fan, but I'm against anyone fucking with someone just because they ain't doing things their own way. If it come out a year, if it come out tomorrow that Kenya's lying, that don't matter. What matter is, this is what she fed us, and we need to let the fuck go, because otherwise, we look petty and childish, keep fucking with that lady. Um, so yeah, and that's all I'm gonna say about that. I don't really care. Cause even I think Sheree, not Sheree, either Sheree or Portia was saying, well, why didn't you tell Cynthia about your marriage? You know, Cynthia not coming, you know, that, that says something about your relationship. No, the fuck it doesn't. You don't have to, ch look, the dick Kenya suck don't affect Cynthia. And that's all I'm gonna say about that. Move the fuck on. Um, Sheree saying that Tyrone will be getting out what did she say? Next year or later this year? No, he won't. He won't be in there forever. He got four more years. So I agree. He, he he got in prison to prison. Okay, he's the president of the prison. He got four more years. Um, the rest of it, I didn't care much much about the rest of the of the reunion. Honestly, you know, we had Portia saying how her and Nene are in a better place, um, which was weird because at the end she said how you know well me and Nene was kind of off or whatever, but I never wanted to go so far off and like ruin things and they said well that's kind of crazy because you and candy which is cool but you went completely left with candy but you know porsche is full of shit and I, you know it is what it is you know we still see nini saying that she never said that she wanted porsche fired i mean if we want to play dictionary she never did say that um someone called in and asked her who do she think she lead the show and she said kenya well she said freaking frack which was uh phaedra and porsche and she stood by her words and said and i still feel like they should have because because of what happened but I, that but the difference is if someone asked me a question who do i think should be fired my opinion excuse me does not mean that i then called the bosses and said fire them too that ain't what it mean because had she said anyone else's name it was just her fucking opinion so you know p p peace beyond you bitch um 
<sighs> Sheree saying how she was still mad about Portia saying that I don't trust Sheree. But Sheree was stupid because Sheree then said that she don't trust Portia. So my thing is, if you don't trust Portia, why do you care that she don't trust you? We all know Sheree carries bones back. Sheree carries some goddamn bones back. She can get her, her own house fixed. So you need to worry about yourself. No one trusts you because they know you're not trustworthy. Anything that you hear, you're going to go back and say something about it. If I say Portia was out here sucking dick behind the bar, don't tell nobody. Girl, you know Jelly said it. Portia, you can't hold water at the fuck off. So whatever. Um, they bring up how Sheree is only loyal to Kim, and she is. Um, we know that for a fact. So I don't think Sheree has any way to backpedal on Plenty Pop and say that she isn't loyal to Kim. You know, Porsche was saying how we all knew, we all saw how you knew Kim had that video beforehand, and you was up there kicking with her and laughing with her. Before we even went to Barcelona. So you is really fake and full case about that. You know, you could have said something. And Sheree said, well, you know, no one ever comes to my defense. Because, well, for one, you don't have no storyline. So there's nothing to defend. Um, two, whenever you something's happened, you usually are the one that's wrong. And, you know, Nini was saying how she felt like Sheree could have just gave her a heads up. A bottle. Because had it been her house, had it been Kim's house, she would have wanted someone to give them a heads up. So she's more, she was more upset that, that Sheree did not do that. I completely agree. Sheree completely is Sweetie 2.0. Sheree is caught in the goddamn Kim Zosiac sunken place and her ass can't get out. Somebody need to go fucking flash Sheree because she's she's stuck. Okay? She's the fuck stuck. And she was saying how um, Sheree knew she was wrong because at one point when Portia was saying, but you know what's wrong? All Sheree could say was, shut up, Portia. That's it. Yeah. Um. So you know, Sheree then says how you know. No, I think someone said to her, "You could, no." Sheree said, "You know, I carry back bones because I want the ladies to be held accountable for what they say and they do." They then said, "But you never do that with Kim. You never hold Kim accountable for anything that she says or she does, and you never come and tell us." Anything Kim says, like Kim literally said shit to you that you never told Kenya, Kenya, Nini, uh. Candy, none of them. When Kim, when Kim said that, when Kim said Candy tried to eat her coochie, which we know was a lie, Sheree never took that bone back to Candy. When Kim said Nene House got roaches, she was parked in handicap, Sheree never went back to, to Nene and gave that bone. Like they said, you carry everybody else's bones, but you don't do shit with Kim because Kim is a sl look. Sheree. Kim has ruined you on every level. No one is going to want to fuck with you, period. I think you need to understand that Kim made you be a fool. Kim took your peach from you. A bitch with no peach got your peach snatched. And she has her own motherfucking show. So, Sheree, you're fucking stupid. Um, it was dumb. And they said to her, like, you don't... You only listen to Kim. You only protect Kim. And Sheree then said, well, I don't feel the need to tell the ladies anything Kim says. I, at that point, when she said that, I said, Sheree just put her nail in her own goddamn gone coffin. No one is going to trust you with nothing. With not a zilt, zip, zero. It's just not going to happen. And, you know, Candy was on. That was basically the end of it. I feel like Sheree's full of shit. Um, Candy was also on uh, her Instagram today. Because Nene, not Nene. Kim kept saying how, you know, Candy had, like, some failed spinoff shows and how her show is the only successful show because it's been off so many seasons. We all know bullshit shows that have a whole bunch of seasons because ain't shit else on. And what I love is that uh, Candy clapped back and said, bitch, my specials, all three of my specials, has done better than your show Period, and she posted the little po the, the screenshots of the um announcement announcements on how many viewers her shows had. She also said, "I did, you know, three spinoffs for a certain amount of shows because I'm busy working and I don't have time to do a whole bunch of a whole bunch of episodes." And it's fucking true, bitch. Um, C Candy has had the her wedding special. The ski trip special and the escape special. Everyone was pissed off when all of them the, the the things went off, and they didn't go off because they weren't good. Candy had other shit to do, and she did not want to commit to more. Now we all do hope that she do come back with the second season of Escape Still Kicking It. They did go on tour, but I mean, Kim, you sound dumb. No one really watches Tardy for the Party, and what Kim, 
Nene, I mean, what Candy said was, I've had three specials. They've all been one-hour episodes, but you only have 30-minute shows. So, bitch, at the end of the day, my shit still outshines yours because you can't even get an hour show. Yours all 30 minutes. And I think the Kim show has been on for a few seasons. I don't watch that shit at all. I really don't. And that's all Kim has. That's all she has. So, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I told her before, I don't like him. Fuck him. Anybody who look like him, our wigs, her fake lips, her fake eyes, oh, fuck all of it. Okay, I just do not like her. She need to stay in her own goddamn party for the party lane and just stay off of the Housewives of Atlanta. Point blank, period. And other than that, I'm all done. So, I hope you guys enjoy this review. Put your comments below. Other than that, I am Jay Lee. This is Jay's Corner. Peace.